Hello everybody. It has been a while, hasn't it? I hope you're all doing okay. Um, yeah, I basically decided to take a little bit of a break. Um, I just, no particular reason, just decided to, to give myself a, a couple of months off just to to try other things creative. I know those who follow the channel are well aware that I've been picking up my guitar a lot lately and um, I've been really, enjo really enjoying that. And I just decided, yeah, that I would take a couple of months off photography and, and wait till sort of towards the end of the summer and then start looking to get back into it. And here I am in <laughs> what better place to, to start it off than, than the Lake District. It's, uh, it's really hot actually. Um, so I haven't done any filming coming up the the fell or any, you know, any B-roll because it was just, just too hot and when you're carrying near on 20 kilos on your back with all the water and, and lunch and everything, it it's, um, gets quite uh, tiring, especially now I've had five months, uh, <laughs> five months off and that's five months without the gym as well, so I'll notice it. <laughs> um, I've actually been up on this fell probably a good two and a half hours, three hours, um, sort of standard process for me really when I come up to the Lake District. I pick a location uh, the first evening or first afternoon I try and scout for the following morning and, and then try and look for something for for now and then I know in the morning I haven't got to rush around, I can, I can head straight to somewhere. Uh, however, unfortunately I've, I've really struggled today, I've not been able to to find myself a composition for tomorrow morning so little bit of a dilemma at the minute. Um, I don't want to come up here, lug all my gear up here and then just sort of feel a bit, you know, lost running around trying to find something. So I'll have to have a think about what I do tomorrow morning. Maybe I, rather than come up here, maybe I try and shoot um, somewhere new that I've not shot before that's just really, really simple location down at Crow Park. I don't know if you can see. Um, it's a little bit of just above the main pike of skid, main bit of skid ore, there's, there's a bit straight down the middle and just some grass to the right of that. It's, um, it's down there, you won't be able to see it on this wide angle, but somewhere down there, I shall see. But if there's a lot of people, I won't film because <laughs> I feel a bit too self-conscious. Um, it's lovely to be out, it really is. It really is lovely to be out. I, struggling to think of things to say when when I started this channel it has been that long <laughs> you get out of practice um but it's simple really isn't it it's a photography channel I, I go out I take photos and I talk to you about my photos which uh, is what I'm going to do now the the heather in places now let's say maybe one or two patches is is really nice it's really in full bloom and lots of lots of color unfortunately um there's only a few patches and I had plans to try and shoot uh, an image that I shot back in February. Um, although I focus more on the birch and the, and the, you know, the, the bare branches of the birch, there was a lot when I was composing, I remember there was a lot of heather. Obviously it was winter, so it wasn't in bloom around me. And I was hoping I could cr try and get a slightly different take on that composition. However, unfortunately, it just doesn't quite work. There's not enough heather in bloom and I just can't get the balance quite right. So, um, I had a bit of a wander around and I've come to this part, literally um, the tip of the fell is just there and the path just walks down here and I'm here. So after all that effort, I'm about three meters from the footpath, but uh, <laughs> I'm not complaining, I'm, I'm really not. It's, it's lovely, the heather here is gorgeous and the, as the sun is starting to set down here, I'm getting some nice light on the side. I've still got two and a half hours till till sunset so as always with me it's going to be a waiting game i just got to hope there's a lot of cloud starting to form just above the fells to the um to the west here i just got to hope that as it dips lower and lower i still get some nice light but um the, the composition i'm basically just using i just pop up the live view here so i can have a look i'm basically just using a sea of heather in the foreground and letting it lead down through the fell and then obviously you've got the um the valley is the mid-ground leading up to Derwent Water and Skiddor with cat bells on the west. There's not a lot to it really actually it's very similar to um compositionally minus the fact that it's it's summer and I'm using the heather rather than 
just focusing on the, the autumnal colour to, um, to an image Joe Cornish made, made you know, famous a long time ago. And I was almost in two minds whether to shoot this composition because it is so similar with the, with the fir tree there and then the birch on the, on the right. But I thought, you know, this image wasn't working. It's not the same image, it's on the same fell, but uh, I'll give it a go. I've taken a couple of test shots. I've decided F16 works best for me, focus at infinity. The first patch of heather is right here. And although it's a little bit soft, because it's only maybe a metre and a half, it gradually, the sharpness gradually increases as you go into the frame. And sometimes it's nice to focus stack. If I was really trying to emphasise that piece of heather in the foreground, then maybe I would have focus stacked. But as it's just a nice vista, you know, it, it doesn't really matter that it's, it's pin sharp. Uh, I've got a two-stop medium edge grad just to help bring that histogram into the middle and because the sun is nicely over here I've got a polarizer on and just 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 slightly turning it to um, make the clouds pop but I don't want to turn it too much because it darkens the water and I quite like that being quite bright in the frame it help, helps draw the eye in but other than that there is not a lot to say just a case of, as is always, always the case for me, up in the Lake District, just patience and it's about time I had some sandwiches because obviously sunset's half eight, be back down to the van, probably quite late, I won't want to cook dinner then so I'll be straight to bed and sunrise is at five o'clock-ish so if I do come up here I don't want to be faffing around, I want to get straight to bed, although I do see myself taking it nice and easy and trying but it depends what the forecast is depends what the forecast says so as soon as the light happens I will come and get you I'm hoping <laughs> Everything is just starting to come together. I've got a probably, maybe another half hour, 45 minutes of light before it goes behind those fells. But now I'm getting light on the foreground, some nice contrasty light in the valley, although that has just disappeared a little bit. It was nicely just creating some lovely long shadows on the trees. But most importantly, what I was discussing earlier is the light is now on Skidor and it's very hazy it's a little bit hazy but that's another thing the polarizer will help with to cut through that but it's just looking I'm really yeah on, on the back of the camera I'm really pleased with it it looks really good the clouds are even really these got these lovely wispy clouds forming up there and it's just creating some a nice pattern in the sky and um, Yes, I'm really hoping it's going to turn into something I'm really pleased with. One thing I didn't mention um, earlier is the, the, the heather almost creates a little S leading you through with how the light's falling and, and the shadows and the highlights it's creating. It's almost creating a little S bend into you. And then I've got the fir tree that the S bend just stops at. And then everything else just, you know, opens itself up into a nice vista. But I really like how these clouds are just sitting in the top of the frame now above Skiddor. Now it's just catching that little bit of soft light. Everything photographers use in, in the editing, you know, we use dodging and we use burning to draw the eye uh, to where we want the viewer to look within the composition, within the scene. And at the minute, Mother Nature seems to be doing everything that I want. Uh, exactly how I want it for me. The only thing I'll be doing is just maybe, you know, emphasizing bits rather than creating it, but it's really nice. I could, I was having this, I was having a debate with myself about tomorrow morning and the sun is setting here, the sun is going to rise up over here. So technically tomorrow morning, all being well, if the forecast um, plays ball, I should get the same thing, but side light from this way, which will also, uh, again, it will light up Skiddle, but at this time it will light up Cat Bells. And as the composition is kind of 
pointing that way towards cat bells. I do wonder if it could work even better in the morning or oh, that cloud. It's the little things in these compositions. That's why you'll notice I keep snapping away because the clouds are moving ever so slowly. And just now, the one just below, so I've got one in the top right, just you know, perfectly filling up the top of the frame. The other one is just nicely sitting in and it's scooping all the way over into the top left. And it's just little things like that when, you, when you're doing your photography. I notice when I'm, when I'm teaching workshops, I, um, if there is clouds, because <laughs> sometimes we get blue skies. Actually, quite often I get rainbows. So uh, if you are interested in doing a workshop with me, chances are you'll get a rainbow. <laughs> but um, they'll, get this, they'll get the composition set up and it'll look really nice. But it's just, the, it's just those tiny extra little things like making sure the clouds are in the right place, just waiting, having that little bit of patience or just keep shooting throughout we shoot digital so who cares how many you shoot and yeah just a little bit it just brings it all together and just you know turns a good image into potentially a great image what I'm hoping for is in the next 45 minutes when that light just starts getting that little bit warmer that it stays as it is now on skid or on the heather and those clouds just keep coming across nicely some slightly dense or grey ones with no texture there so hopefully they stay away <laughs> but we shall see yeah brilliant really nice um, <laughs> it's good to be back it's probably feeling a little bit like deja vu just keep seeing me in this exact same spot with maybe a slightly different focal length from where I've just picked the camera up to, to film the back of this camera um, unfortunately I think even though I've probably got another 15, 20 minutes of, of light, and it is really nice just on the heather and, and skiddle. These gray clouds that I was worried about um, earlier are now starting to creep into the composition and it's just looking a little bit off with all the nice white clouds and then just these, this patch of gray on the right of the frame. Um, they're moving quite slowly, I don't see them in the amount of time I've got left for the sun to go down, that they will fill in the frame and potentially, um, you know, make a nice balance within the image. And to be honest, I think because they're, they're sort of this murky gray color anyway, they're not gonna look as nice within the frame as these wispy white clouds I had. So I'm gonna hold on and just see, but I'm pretty certain that I've got the best light the best conditions I'm going to get this evening so unless things drastically change and everything kicks off I will say good night for this evening and I will see you tomorrow morning I think looking at the forecast and just sort of trying to hedge my bet I'm probably going to head down to to Crow Park just for something slightly different something nice and easy you know park and shoot and then uh, in the afternoon i can i can head somewhere else to uh, i've got a couple of locations in mind to to do you know same old same old with scout in the evening and shoot for sunrise so i will put the best of the the bunch these bunch up now uh, i might even put it to my own piece of music a piece of uh, guitar music that i composed during lockdown yeah why not why not use you know the whole shebang photography and the music why not <laughs> um yeah hope you like the image and i will see you tomorrow morning <laughs>
to, <laughs> excuse my hair, I went to sleep with wet hair and, um, <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I could do with a mirror in the van really, couldn't I? <laughs> um, yeah, not particularly inspiring this morning if I'm being honest. I'm, I'm glad I didn't go back up King's How to try and reshoot that same scene as, as yesterday because I would have needed light and as you can probably see there is none of it this morning. But um, I wasn't too fussed about that coming to Crow Park because I just, I thought, well, if, if there is no light, maybe there'll be some nice moody texture in the sky. And the forecast was for, you know, three, four mile an hour winds. So I thought, well, at least I might get a nice moody blue hour shot with the reflections and some, some you know, nice dense clouds. However, although the wind is pretty calm right now on the water, there isn't a reflection. There's just bits of a reflection and it just doesn't work. And, um, there's no texture in the sky above Cat Bell. So, unfortunately, I think I may have uh, missed out on this shot today. The idea was to shoot panoramic. I'm at roughly about 120 mil. And just, you know, simple things where just make sure you level your tripod and then pan throughout the scene and make sure the, the, you know, the level in the camera stays, you know, pretty, pretty much horizontal throughout the scene. But um, I've got about 10 minutes till sunrise and generally speaking, I don't know if it is a written rule, but whenever I'm out shooting reflections, I generally find once the sun comes up that, you know, the wind picks up and the reflections disappear. So I'm not holding my hopes particularly high for anything happening, but I'm gonna give it a little bit longer. And if not, then I'm just gonna have a wander around and just, just explore the area a bit and see, see what's about. Yeah, we we'll just have to wait and see. The, ref the wind is just too strong. There's never gonna be a reflection. So um, I didn't give it another 10, 15 minutes. I gave it another two minutes and, and just decided it's now 10 past six. So the sun has actually risen about 20 minutes ago. And um, I think I may have made a poor decision. Well, it's not a poor decision. I made my decision based on lack of composition and uh, forecast. And as you know, if you're a landscape photographer, the forecast is, is often wrong, especially in somewhere like the Lake District where it kind of makes its own weather. But looking back down towards Borrowdale, there's just so much nice atmosphere with the clouds moving in and out of Castle Crag and Kings How. There's a little bit of me that wished, or I could have made a dash back there and get up Borrowdale, but as I just said before, the weather changes so quickly and by the time I drive down there and hike up Kings Howe again, you know, it'll be over an hour and who knows what the the weather will be doing. And and you know, I'm not complaining, I've got a I've got a bench here so I can I can sit down and enjoy the view. But what I'm doing is I'm probably gonna shoot 16 by 9 and I'm gonna have to crop in a lot because I'm at the long end of this 200 mil and it's just not long enough. And the idea will be to try and just capture all that cloud and atmosphere around Castle Crag as it sort of ebbs and flows around, around the fell. So not too much to it really. Um, yeah, not complaining. I'm in the Lake District, so <laughs> cannot complain. So I think that's pretty much it for this morning, to be honest with you, it does look really good down there. And um, I might actually, when I get back to the van, drive back to where I was last night and just have a quick wander just to see if there's anything. But, um, you know, I'm not gonna get my hopes up. Actually, the cloud is just really nicely all at the bottom of Castle Crag. So one for, one for good luck, <laughs> as they say. But yeah. Um, Pretty much just gonna head back to the van and get myself sorted out for the rest of today. The, the plan is to go to a location that I always end up seeming to go to when I'm in the Lake District and that is Home Fell. And the, the reason for it being is obviously 
it's late August now and the heather potentially could be in bloom and when I was up there last time um, I shot two compositions um, the first one that I'm showing you there was another one just slightly behind it that used the rocks amongst the heather and I'm hoping if it's in bloom it could look really nice if I get some light because the light will come down from the west and illuminate it all so we will see and then there's another one that I shot the morning after that also was amongst the heather and I really like the composition for this one so I just think if the heather again is in bloom it will just add that little bit of colour so we shall see but yeah apologies this morning's been a bit of a <laughs> anti-climax you know it is that it is that way sometimes um, but yeah as always thank you very much for watching um, if you do like the content although it's a bit more <laughs> sporadically uploaded these days um, do consider subscribing if you hit the bell on the subscription thing um, you'll you'll be notified every time I do upload a video so you won't miss out but yeah until next time see you later <laughs>